I'll get these ready. So I'm going to use the axe and the adds. And I, I was thinking, you know, I, of course, I make a lot of bowls, but I also make a lot of spoons. And since I carve a lot of bowls, I have an adds. So you don't need an adds to make spoons. Uh, so I don't want it to be a, a situation where, well, I have to get an ads now. I need it. Well, unless you're looking for an excuse to tell somebody I, I have to get an ads, you know, uh, then that's fine, whatever works. But since I have an ads, you know, I always, uh, when I rough spoons, uh, I always use the ads when I'm roughing spoons. Uh, and I, I don't even think about it. I'm going to use the ads and the ax to, to rough out the spoon. And especially when I make spoons from crooks, which is pretty much all the spoons I make is uh, from crooks. Um, if I don't have crooks, then I don't make spoons <laughs> usually. But uh, I do make some from straight, straight grain once in a while, but I just, enough crooks show up that there's no need. And to me, uh, basically, I in some ways it takes more skill to make a spoon from a straight grain piece of wood you have to take into i mean there it's you know, done you know put it put a little hollow there and you've got a spoon with uh with crank you know it's a you know i know there's workshops on how to get crank in your spoon and stuff well get a crook and then you have crank in your spoon yeah so but the difficult bit then is sometimes when you do come to to axing out a crook, I know some people feel it can be more dangerous, and it, it can be because to get the axe into this tight little area uh, can be a little fiddly and it wants to flip around a little bit and, and things like that. But for certain spoon designs, it's really the only way to accomplish it is with a crook. Okay, so I don't want you to you know, be afraid to go to crooks. You, you can't make that with a straight grain piece of wood. You just can't make it. Well, you, you could temporarily and then one way or another something's going to snap. Um, and this is just, you know, roughed out, a little bit of knife work done on it, but um, so that it can dry, you know, and so then it's ready for me whenever I want to come back to it. But uh, this is a, a cherry crook and of course we want to have the grain going straight through the bottom. And you can usually tell by the growth ring patterns that it's it's following straight straight up through, which allows us to make uh, all else being equal a thinner bowl and a lighter feel to it. Uh, you know, so here's a, a little serving spoon from a crook, and you can get a much thinner bowl with the fibers running straight up through, of course. Uh, and you know, it's it's a little easier in some ways because the fibers are doing the work. For you. So, in order to do that, here's one. So, we have, you know, one in sort of three stages. The final spoon, the one that's been roughed out and hollowed. Uh, this is one that I wanted to see this. This has been roughed out, but not roughly hollowed yet, which is why I took this out of a bag because I don't want it's a little thick before drying right now. But you can see these cross grain marks on here, you can see these bits. That's, that's from the ads. And you can see the ads is what came across here, okay, to form this crank. And you can even have it come across, especially if you get bits of wood. There's sometimes where the grain on a piece wants to dip and dive and your ax is grabbing as you go down. If you just work across the grain with the ads, like I'll show you, you can, you can still shape it much more safely sometimes than if, uh, as, you know, if you find that when you're working the back of a spoon with the ax that sometimes your hand might be getting a little close, it can be a little safer to work across like this, like I'm going to show you, and you can work across the grain. Since the ads has these lips, it won't dig in and tear the grain. So uh, that's some of the reason I go about it. So I'm going to take a couple sample crooks here and show you how I go about it. And then if we have time, I'll also start with a straight blank and show you how I, I use the ads for the same idea. So these crooks were from the tree like 
that, something like that before I split it, okay? And so I cut through the middle there. Now I've had this one that's going to, so this, this is the split in the grain right here. So the grain's running through up here and now it's running through here. So the thing that I want to remember first before I start in, this is not going to be the front edge of the spoon. The front edge of the spoon is not going to be up here. The front edge of the spoon is here. This edge is there where the pencil line is, okay? Because then the fibers, the bottom of my spoon, this surface right here is that, okay? The top of the spoon, I'll, of course the spoon will be somewhat wedge shape, it'll be deeper toward the back and thinner in the front, but I'll compromise on the grain on just this upper edge. And the part that's wide and thin here, the bottom of the bowl, will have no compromise and it'll just follow the fibers, okay? So if the side of the spoon ends up coming back like that, this surface isn't necessarily exactly true with the fibers, but that, that's okay. It's not taking the uh, pressure as, as the bottom is. All right, so uh, you can often, uh, sometimes, especially if it's a bit that you're, sometimes you try to get two bits out of the same one and you end up with zero. Uh, and so you gotta know when the woods, you can sometimes judge by how it's behaved on the first split, whether you think you'll successfully get it to pop nicely on this upper bit. Uh, this one worked out okay. You can see I started the split in parallel, okay? And I tried to, what I, what I did, I probably should have made the split about there to keep the mass a little more equal. And so it ran out and it twisted as it ran out, which I probably would not have avoided there. And that's why sometimes you can end up with zero. You never know what it's going to do. But in this case, I get two spoons out of that. This is a great, you know, I can cut it off there and get a nice eating spoon, you know, out of that top bit, okay? So regardless if I'm starting with this or this, I'll start with this uh, whole, well, I'll, I'll start with, yeah, we'll start with the whole one. So with this, even with that crank, it would be difficult if I wanted to come in here now with the ax and get rid of this top piece. Okay, it could come in from the side a bit and, and so on, but I just come in here and work across. You can see I basically am forming a spoon bowl because it's coming right in. So you, you, have, you have your curve, all right? Now if I were doing a straight spoon, okay, I can still build in a little bit of crank into this by tilting it back a little bit like this. And so, I'm not worried about the bark there. Now, you have to be, you can get a little bit of blowout on the back, especially because I went a little deeper than my lip, but that'll all be gone when. Dave, would you normally start with the bow? Yes, this, uh, this is exactly what I'd start with here. Now I'll return to the crook in a second, but you see the progress. Now it's got a little twist, and so I'm going to take more off this side. And of course, it's very safe. My hand's over here, this is over here. And it, there's no, just using the weight of the ads and let it fall, it's not strenuous. And that, yeah, that you get the idea. So now I can shape the bowl down from there, I can bring the handle. I could take the ax, but I, I, I'll show you with the, 
with the ads, I can still work across the grain here. So now I'm bringing the handle down to the top of the bowl. And I'll make it, you get the idea now. We have a handle, we have the bowl. I can take the ax and knock here and knock back up here at an angle. And I've got the curvature in the bowl. I've got it sweeping up and I haven't had, so I have some crank built in because of this angle here. And I would take it back a little bit more and sweep it up. Uh, just, you know, working with, with the ads. Now, before I work on the outside, I can narrow this down with the ax, get under the handle. But of course, this is a much, this is an easy cut with the ax on the outside. So here, we'll just keep working on this crook and I'll kind of take it to a roughed out stage to show you how I would keep rolling with this. So I want to get down to leave the thinness of the front edge here. So it just keeps getting a little bit larger. Now, it's still a little thick. I know I'm going to be taking the top of that off later, so I'll get it out of my way. So we're getting there, but I still want to go thinner and bring it back down through. Binding on the corners. Okay, so we're almost there now. Just a little bit more. So you can see now I'll have that upper surface all done. If, I, if I'm very careful with the ads, I basically won't have to come back to that. I will have the top surface of my spoon shaped. And when I draw my outline of the spoon on there, then it's a matter of just removing the back and the sides and, and the top, just do the contour right from the ads. So I can refine that just with light cuts Okay, and I want to leave myself some room with the ax to clean this up. I'm not necessarily, I, I could have left it up here and made a big deep spoon, but I just chose, you know, not to make a big deep spoon. And so uh, now I can clean up this side again. If I try to clean this up with the ax, I either have to come down this way with trying to get my thumb back here, and this wants to. So I have to somehow do it, and it's very difficult to do on a crook. But with the ads, I just hold it here. Now I noticed that that little knot was there. We might be, that's gonna be a little bit off to the side. I hoped it was gonna be able to end up in the middle of the handle.
slightly deeper sweep? Yeah, that? yeah. You can imagine you you'll end up with a little bit deeper furrows, but you just put them I closer together. Yeah. Slightly deeper. It's yeah. Yeah, you'll see different shapes. Of course, this one has, you know, you're talking about something with a shape more like this. You do the same thing. You'll just have to maybe put them closer together so that you don't end up with uh, too many ridges. Now, of course, if you the ridges cleaned up easy with will clean up easy with knife work. So this is what I meant when sometimes you'll get a, a particular piece of wood, especially if you're working with, with a crook where the grain is just changing a little bit as you go through and it wants to grab the ax or grab the knife when you go in one direction or the other. But by working across the grain with the adds, you take that out of the equation. And so I can start looking from the side and decide how I want that handle to sweep up exactly if I want it to kick back a little or if I want uh, for example if I wanted this you see it kind of comes up and then there's a slight hollow here in the handle a little sweep up uh, that's easy to work in here I can just Now in the middle, it's got a little bit of a twist to it. I'll take a little more off this side. So now I've got the general top profile established there. And then I'll take uh, a pencil. Did I put that big yellow pencil? There we go. And I'll keep it basically straight. The wood has a bit of a bend to it, but even if I have a bowl, uh, a spoon that has a little bend or a twist, uh, I'll still put a central line, sort of the line of flow through the center of the piece. And so I start with something like that. And I was originally thinking about that being in the middle, but it's not, that'd be kind of a stretch to make happen. So I do that and then I just decide. Uh, now the deepest part of my bowl is going to be right about here because that's what the piece is telling me. So I'll put the back of the spoon so in, in this area and then the bottom will be shaped. I, I will be changing that sharp angle, of course, at, at the, the deep part. And so I can come up here. Oh, and of course, there's no right answer for this. But. give it a little angle, uh, being prejudiced to right-handers there, but sorry. Who's left-handed here? We got, okay, so you, you go like that, yeah. And I have enough, you know, thickness here with, with the, the other thing is with a um, uh, crook, you don't really need a lot of keel because the fibers are running right along but it can still be part of a, the design feature and, and it allows you to make this central portion actually very thin because the fibers are still all the way true through that vertical sort of I-beam, you know, that you can leave, which, which can make an interesting change of form. So, yeah, we'll bring the handle I, use, I don't worry about what's happening at the top of the handle at this point. I deal, I'll deal with that later. But. 
So I just get the rough outline there. And then I continue uh, just like you would with uh, straight bits. I'm going to come back to the ads. We'll set it there a second. I think I have a little saw here. I'm going to make a couple saw cuts in here to the uh, neck of the spoon. So this is just, of course, without the saw, most of you have made some spoons. I, I would make a V cut with the ax, but this will be a little faster. So now I've left that little bit here, but I basically have the wood solid straight up through. Um, then, uh, typically, I come to the axe at this point. I could work across here with the ads, but it does have its limits on this. this I'm going to have to nibble my way back, and when it's that thin, it's just not necessary, and the axe works efficiently here. So I'll come down from the widest part of the bowl. Let's see where are we, how this is working. Make a relief cut there. And then I'll come down from the, I'm used to working standing up. Is that a British and American thing or is that a spoon, so I'm sorry. Is that a, is that a spoon fest thing that we typically chop sitting, sitting down or whatever? I don't, it's a spoon fest thing, okay. I thought you were all just very short when I saw these chopping blocks. <laughs> I just did a course from Anna Castle. It doesn't sit down. That, yeah, I know. I, I, uh, I can appreciate that. You get more chopping blocks. Uh, yeah. So I'll come down there. If there's any, you know, bit at the front, I'll often just kind of keeps the same pattern going. Now, uh, so here I can compromise just a little on these fibers to make that bottom a little bit rounded because this crook I mean you can see the way it's split it's almost dead dead straight there um, looks like we had a little bit there that was running but I think we'll be okay all right so I'll bring that down and that's okay at this point about that thickness and then on this this side here forgot I wanted to do this next. I'm going to, now that I have this angle, then I'm going to trim these down to the, to the saw cut. You know, it's a, a pretty common sort of procedure. So I'll come in until that splits away. And I don't want to come too far down. You know, I touched it there, but if you come down hard, then you know, you've all been there. Uh, so little bits. So that'll work there. Then I'll come back on this side. It helps sometimes, especially with these crooks, I, I tend to leave a little lip on when, when I cut a chopping block. I'll make a saw cut this so deep from one side, then make the saw cut deeper and let that little bit chip away. Then you always have this little ridge to kind of catch it, um, but it'll work this way as well. And you see this side was a little bit uh, thicker. I think I'll try a little bit of this on this one since it's that thick. Now, in order to trim that up, I know I'm going to get a little more off under the handle there. So you have to do a little more. You can't, it's not, when you're working with straight grain, you can simply say, this is my procedure. I have the grain, the next piece is gonna be very similar, so I do boom, boom, boom. With a crook, you have to adjust a little bit to what it's given you. It's a little more, uh, you know, it requires you to be a little more flexible. 
So I'm going to get that a little bit thinner under here. If I make these relief cuts, then I don't have to worry about the grain running in too much. Now I've got a much easier time making that trimming cut there. And we'll let that stay a minute. Uh, I like it when there's a little bit of a notch on the side of the block. Don't tell Barn. And what that will do, I can kind of nestle this here and get the handle, and it'll then that allows this to stop. And I want that to come in, uh, you'll see it when I flip it around, but right behind, just at a straight angle behind the bowl. It's holding on a little, so I'm going to take it back a little further first. And then we'll come back on this side. Now, we're almost there. I just want to make this transition here a little smoother. And I can work across this because sometimes if I catch here, those fibers want to run kind of funny on me. So I can, I can work across. I have to work, break them a little bit first. And get that peak away and let some of that wood that's unsupported over there split off. Now see we had this, there was a split here running, so I know I've got a one way or another that's going to, to have to come out of there. I don't there we go. So now we're starting to get the bottom shape, but we still obviously have a lump here to get rid of. I think I'm going to round that just a little more right through there. <laughs> just those light little cuts. Now I can make some decisions about this down the road with the knife. But I find more and more, while the axe is in my hand, I just try to do all the shaping I can. So you can start to see the spoon you know, showing up with the fibers running straight through here, fibers running straight through this way. And I'm all, this is almost you know, where I would leave it for uh, knife work, but I, I want to get rid of some of these angles back here. I usually make a couple cuts. Like that. Another one on this side. And then if I wanted to shape a little bit of that and uh, Yeah, ready for a knife, ready for hollowing, and that's it. And, uh, 
you know, you can always, that end grain, you know, you can trim that as well. And that saves you a little bit with a knife. Um, yeah, go ahead, whatever question. That bowl only requires finishing, it doesn't require deepening, does it? No, I mean, I, I would, there's still room to get a hollow in, you know. Would you use the ads for that or would you use a uh, I can do a little bit with the ads, chunk out a little bit, but typically I would, uh, depends on, if it's a big, large and deep, sometimes I'll just, and if I'm not, if, I, if I'm in my shop, then I can just clamp this into the vise and try to get out some with a gouge first. Uh, but yeah, you can, uh, take the ads especially if it's one that's a little bit steeper but you can I'll, that's a little easier but just in case you have something more like this even here you can use these the tighter corners and you can rough out some of that but you're not going to get in there and make these smooth cuts because even the way I have this bevel shaped and so on is more for long sweeping uh, cuts right um, but I can break some of that grain you know I can come in here and you see I, I can break that grain that makes a much easier time for your spoon knife to come in and sweep those things out you can even do it with your finger uh, if you can get a little bit of that out so even though people you know tend to think of an ads being a bowl carvers tool I think it has a lot of use, if, you know, for spoon carving and roughing out spoons, especially, you know, some larger spoons, cooking spoons, and you know, big serving spoons like this. Um, and then, you know, a little bit of knife work, and you you basically have it to a shape where you can let it dry, then and pick it up and come back to it when you're going somewhere, and you don't have to do all the rough work. Um, what are, where are we? Oh, we're at 3.15. Okay, so any other quick questions before Amy starts? What sort of way of acting are you using that? Um, it's funny, normally I would tell you I don't know, but I just, a guy sent me an ad the other day to tell me what I thought of it to, to send, and I waited, it's, uh, I actually have the little remnants of what I wrote down. It's one pound, 12 ounces. So 16 and 12, 28 ounces. I guess, yeah. This is Hans Carlson ads, and they still, now this is my handle uh, because I actually bought it from Drew Langsner from Country Workshops years ago when th there weren't all these other places to buy them. And Drew, uh, ha you can, you'll even see subtle differences now. They've got the forging of these, they have some fixtures that make the forging a little faster. Whereas on mine, it's all individual hammer blows over the, the whole thing, but it's the exact same shape still. Um, and, and adds is a harder thing to get right than an ax. With an ax, you're swinging in line with the blade, you're swinging. So if the bevel's not quite to your, it's just a matter of twisting your wrist to get the bevel to be meeting the wood in a sweet way and, and cut. But with an adds, it's, it's perpendicular to your swing. And so the bevel, if the bevel's not hitting, what a common problem you'll see is people have an ads, and you'll notice how with my swing, I can take those wispy shavings, it just wants to, it wants to, that's because the, the arc of the swing is in harmony with the bevel and the arch of the tool head. And if it's not, and a lot of them are not, in fact, it's more common that they're bad. Uh, this, the, the head, what you often see, they'll just stick, they'll take the same head and put a, a long handle or a 15 inch handle. And what happens is the hang of the head is too tight. It's like this. And so what happens is the bevel, when it swings into the wood, is not coming in like that. It's coming in like this. And you just, it will cut. And a lot of people don't know like, oh, an adds just hurts when you use it, you know? <laughs> 
and it's not supposed to, it, it's just you're slamming the bevel and you're making some progress with the cut, but so much of the energy is just slamming and then going right into your wrists and elbows. And honestly, when you use a bet, it's like five swings and you just about, you can't stand it anymore, but they still do it all the time. It's like, instead of biting into an apple like this and having the teeth enter sweetly, it's like somebody shoving an apple, you know, into your face. How's that? Do you like that apple? You know, and it's, it's horrible. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's a, a Hans, Hans Carlson and they make different, different sizes and weights and all that. So I'll get out of Amy's way. And if you have any other questions, I'll answer. I'll be over here. Right. Thank you. Thanks.